Alfonso Clark Trey Burke III, born November 12, 1992. They said there'll never be another Magic Johnson. Then an even better one came along. They said there'll never be another Michael Jordan. Then Kobe came and was a pleasant imitation even after a while growing into his own game. Isaiah Thomas, Larry Bird, and the list goes on of great players that similar players came after and have been compared to in style, either surpassing him or becoming a great in his own right. Except Allen Iverson. To me, Iverson is the hardest player to recreate and in my opinion, there will never be another player you could compare to Allen in play style that can have the same or better success because the league was so much different when Iverson took it by storm with moves, a look, personality and even game that wasn't always accepted and or championed by the NBA. But he was and is one of the greatest to ever do it even without a championship second to Jordan as my all-time favorite player. I just knew there could never be another player like Iverson whose game I'd absolutely love watching. Then comes Trey Burke, a player that shows you just why the Allen Iverson game wouldn't work in today's NBA. Of course, not the player himself because I do feel with his confident and defiant personality, along with his competitive nature and charisma that allowed his teammates to follow his lead, Allen Iverson himself just might be even better in this era. But that style without the intangibles just mentioned would probably end up being Trey Burke. Shockingly, Trey Burke's game style evolved into what could be a splitting image of Allen Iverson's. He even eerily resembles him physically, making me wonder why isn't Trey Burke able to have close to or the same success in the league? Has time and the game changed that much? Before even making it to his fifth season, he was already a part of three teams. Minnesota, before traded to Utah on draft night, from Utah to Washington, where he remained for a year, then not extended by the team, so joined the Knicks G League affiliate before the Knicks called him up, and two more teams after that, six in total in nine years. He's since been traded to the Rockets and OKC, both he never reported to, and back to the G League before August 2023, the Warriors granted him a workout. He's currently without an NBA team, about to be 31 years old. Makes me think what happened to Iverson's second coming, and why with the same style of a Hall of Famer, he didn't work out like expected in the NBA. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Trey Burke is a listed six foot point guard, but like Iverson, is likely shorter than that, but has game much bigger than his height, as he does have long arms and athletic enough where I've rarely seen this cause a problem on the offensive end. He's from Columbus, Ohio, and attended Northland High School. As a sophomore and junior, he didn't receive much accolades because he was playing a supporting role to then high school superstar Jared Sullinger. After Sullinger left, in Burke's senior season, he took over and led his team to a 26-2 record. He was labeled a 4 and on some recruiting services, 3-star recruit, winning the Ohio Mr. Basketball in 2011. He first committed to Penn State because they were the first to offer him, but would decommit later and sign with the University of Michigan, where he became a star and ready to leave for the NBA in just two years. Stun number one, out of position and possibly error. Trey Burke has a few issues that worked and continues to work against him, and this one seems to be one of the more glaring. Like Allen Iverson, he's a small, scoring guard placed in the distributing guard position when quite frankly, there are better guards now in the league that can do both those things better. Him being in the wrong era is the exact difference between he and Allen Iverson. When Allen came in, the league had yet to see a guy like him that was that good at scoring the ball even though he was undersized at the point guard position. One thing I loved about AI, his shot making ability was off the charts. He wasn't the most efficient, but when he needed to make a big shot, he did, and enough of them to carry his Sixer team to an NBA Finals practically by himself and win a game against the juggernaut Lakers of 2001. 
In Allen's era, each team had one superstar on it for the most part that were the focus of the offense as the league was transitioning from the old school 80s, early 90s moves, making Allen a breath of fresh air. But in this era, with each team now having two to three stars or superstars, and a team full of guys that actually get in the gym and care about being the best on the floor more than they had in the past, there isn't an exact need for a guy like Burke that presents a liability on defense because of his size and isn't able to average more than three assists for his career. When it comes to scoring, that's the biggest difference between he and Allen Iverson. Burke doesn't have the freedom to be inefficient like Allen had. In an era there was space to be, and coaches had no other choice but to live with the good and the bad. That game style is difficult in this era because of the selfishness it takes to do what Iverson did in his career, and now that teams and players are held more accountable, Burke's not able to chuck shots like Allen Iverson did, and he doesn't have the instincts to be a traditional point guard making him expendable to teams. Stunt number two, the Utah Jazz. Coming into the NBA from Michigan, where I watched Burke a great deal as the ninth pick, I was hoping he didn't end up on a team like Minnesota or Utah or someplace that's just immune to winning or attracting the best in employees and talent wanting to come and stay there. It's the reasons teams like Portland, Sacramento, Utah, Minnesota, Cleveland, and so on find it so difficult to have success and even keep their star players whom they drafted. There's just not enough there for some players who care about the city in which they live or the organization being highly competent and capable of helping the player grow. A team like Utah trading for Burke on draft night had potential in a negative or positive way. There, he would get a chance to step right in and play right away, and 68 of his 70 games as a rookie, he did just that. He was the fourth leading scorer on the team at 12.8 points a game and a career-high 5.7 assists per game. He made the all-rookie first team that year, and what does Utah do the very next season after? Draft another point guard. The hyped Dante Exum from Australia, who came in as the fifth overall pick, so obviously had to play and play a lot. Burke's starts were cut in half to give Exum opportunity and his production took steps back in a few areas, especially in year three, without the room and confidence the team believed in him as their point guard of the future. Looking over his shoulder did nothing to help his situation. The Jazz traded him to the Wizards July 2016 to give Exum a fair shot at being the guy, but Utah quickly seen that was far from the case. Trey Burke could have been great in Utah, but the team gave up on him too soon for what turned out to be a huge bus. Stunt number three, opportunity. It's one of my favorite words because it's literally the difference between who ends up being great or not. Trey Burke didn't receive much of it after his rookie year in Utah or much ever since. Being traded to Washington meant he'd be John Wall's backup surely, and that's what it was. It lasted just a season, and Burke played horrible in this role, averaging just 5 points a game and 1.8 assists. The Wizards also signed Brandon Jennings, who immediately became Wall's new backup, leading Burke out the door and into free agency. He was signed and waived by the Knicks and had to play for their affiliate G League team. From there, Trey Burke's career led to teams that didn't have a starting or a pretty much bench opportunity for him. His career then after was reflective of inconsistent opportunity as when he did get the chance, he'd show he could be effective but being in the times we are now, with kids coming into the league that are much better than before, teams can be more sudden about letting a player go about his way as middle of the road players like Trey Burke have become a dime a dozen. All in all, Trey Burke is still a nice player that's about to embark on a possible 10-year NBA career. His game is beautiful, like Allen Iverson's was, but also an example of how that game style just wouldn't work today unless in an ideal situation. 
still one of my favorite guards to watch. For these reasons, his growth was stunning. Salute, much respect. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.